My name is Deborah Samuel. I was born in Vancouver, BC, and I'm a photographer. My idea of happiness is peace, finding peace in yourself, being settled in yourself. For me, that's always been a struggle. And I think as an artist, you're always looking for that, to figure out how things boil down to its purest core. And once you kind of figure out where everything drains to, you've got an answer that allows you to expand on it again. I think my greatest fear is my animals becoming ill or uh, family, people I love, loss. I find loss hard to deal with. The living person I probably admire off the top of my head is probably Leonard Cohen. In large part, I've worked with him a number of times uh, when I was working in entertainment doing photography. I just always admired the way, in a world that operated totally differently, he was somebody that came in with a great deal of compassion and humanity. I always remember on one particular shoot that he went around and asked each assistant's name and wanted to know their story, what was important to them. And at the end of the shoot, he remembered all of their names. And it always struck me as that's why he can be as poignant, really, with his writing and his understanding is because he is interested in everybody's story, what makes them all tick. Probably the, the characteristic I dislike about myself is my inability to see myself at times. The inability to see my physical being, I don't always relate to that. I relate more to the inner workings of my brain, and that is more my identity than my physical body. The characteristic that I most dislike in other people is thoughtlessness, not caring about how other people feel. Thinking things through about watching, translating that into my photography, translating the feeling, the thought behind stuff, connecting the dots, and that is being extremely aware all the time, where your brain never really shuts off. Sometimes it's nice just to take a holiday from my head. In terms of humanity, I, I would think is perceived wealth, you know, monetary wealth. You know, I, I think there's, that's such an important thing is, you know, what you, in terms of money and how much and what your net worth is and things like that. In a sense, it doesn't really mean an awful lot. Certainly you can do what you want with it, but I've seen, I think, far happier people with a lot less that appreciate every moment, appreciate the smallest things. What gives me the most satisfaction is really producing a body of work that communicates. It actually, too, is nice to finish the body of work, because usually this last body of work that I worked on, it was a year, and it was a very challenging journey on a lot of levels. The new body of work is called Passing. It's actually, I'm photographing plants for that body of work to show the life cycle, understanding of the life cycle, the cycle of passing, understanding rebirth, death, loss. It was a lot of thinking, so <laughs> I've been thinking a lot for a year. Probably when I just accept that life is what it is and everything that comes at you comes at you for a reason. And even if it's sad or difficult to deal with, there's a greater purpose to the outcome and that you have to really accept that that's just part of the journey. And I think if you can live with that and accept that that's the way it is and you have a choice, you feel safe because anything coming at you, you can deal with. You know, my most treasured possession, it's very interesting. I mean, it would be something a bus driver gave me when I was about five years old. Uh, his name was Lou, and his initials went LWL, because I remember they spelt backwards and forwards the same way. He used to pick me up, me and my sister up, taking us to like grade one, so I was probably six. He always called me his queen. He was always really, really kind to me. And one day he gave me a brooch that was a crown and it had all, it had maybe a pearl in it, but there were all these missing little pieces in this. And I have kept that and I keep it in my jewelry box and I always think of him. My favorite distraction would be um, probably just stopping long enough to catch up with my brain in terms of kind of looking at what I've been thinking about without a sense of having a regard for what I've been thinking about, actually stopping long enough to go, what was I just thinking about? And where does that take me? 
So I would say probably just stopping. I don't actually stop very often. I'm kind of always on the go and thinking a lot. What challenges me most professionally is producing work that communicates, that is able to translate what A, I'm seeing or thinking or feeling, and translating that to people so that they can feel what's going on in the work. That, that's always challenging. The biggest fork in the road for me was when I started working with dogs. That's when the decision to stop working commercially and concentrate on my own interests and express that photographically, that's when it happened. And it's not like it happened overnight. It was sort of a period of letting go of this and becoming more interested in that. And realizing that that part of my life had had its function, had had its interest, and it didn't hold that for me anymore. My idea of success now is inner peace, being happy and happy with the simplest things, and appreciation, which has taken me a long time to get to that understanding, because my idea of what happiness was when I was 20 or 30 was very different. But I would say those are the important things. If I could change the world, it would be that people and uh, inhabitants of the world, whether that be animals or whatever makes up the world, learn to live in harmony, learn to appreciate what's beautiful about all of it. And if you can appreciate that, I think you'd have a more peaceful heart psychologist on some level or a vet. It's just the vet thing, the part that would be tough for me is the surgery. I, I'm not sure I, I could do that, but helping animals, I would find that rewarding. I think if I were given an award, the one that would mean the most to me is my work with animals. My work at helping people understand that, you know, A, they have rights and they deserve what we all want, and that's kindness and love and compassion and understanding, making that visible to people. I would say a little culture shocked, you know, I, and a lot of it's because I've been quite isolated working on this body of work in the desert and been very quiet and very introspective and all of a sudden I'm sort of in Toronto and it's changed so much and it's like, wow, that corner that I used to go by every day 15, 16 years ago is completely different. But it's just change. It's strange when you come back to what was familiar to you and it's changed. Without the graduation of the experience, it's like, bang, that's different. My motto and the words that I would live by is accepting the experiences that come my way gracefully.